never won that race. Man, what a team. What a team, man. These guys were busting off some, some great pit stops. You can do it, Jeff. I know you can do it. Wow, Riley gets that pin. That won't do that boy, does it? Let's go. We're going to pull the left rear wheel off and pull the pin on the sway bar. Go, 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 go. Dig out, dig out hard, hard. Go, 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 go. Oh, and they were in contact. They go down into the corner side by side and Jeff Gordon holds off the challenge. million dollars. Come on, buddy. What you expect me to do, man? <laughs> the spring race at Richmond tested the metal and muscle of the previously undefeated DuPont crew. The smoking tire, the twisted sheet metal, the clouded dreams. But when you have a driver that is driven to succeed and a leader who idolizes the likes of Lombardi, there is no room for surrender in this multicolored team of titans. Each week, this oval faces another. But last week, we learned it takes a lot of sense to make one million dollars. Well, in a week when there's been a lot of talk about music awards, Jeff Gordon certainly deserves Performer of the Year, at least to this point. Nine number one smash singles, and if things continue, well, he could have another gold album at the end of this year. Last week, another record smash and a million-dollar payday. But, Jeff, obviously it's natural for an athlete to let down after a huge performance. How do you get focused on this race tonight? Well, you know, we started thinking about Richmond on Tuesday uh, this week because we went down and we tested this car. And shook it down at a little track in South Carolina so you know we, we came here pretty pretty well prepared but uh, we, we certainly uh, have had to forget about Darlington since we've been here because we've been working real hard the car hasn't been exactly the way we want it and we once we get the car right then we start uh, abusing the tires a little bit more so it's gonna be an interesting night for uh, the DuPont Chevrolet but as uh, well as these guys worked last week uh, I got a lot of confidence in what we can do here tonight a lot of sweet music at Darlington. He's hoping this car plays a similar tune. He starts 10th looking for win number 10. Kerry Labonte has been backing up instead of going forward lately. This crash at Pocono in July dropped Terry from the points lead all the way back to third place. Since then, the Iceman has seen his title hopes start to melt. An average finishing position of 17.6 in the last six races has dropped him to 257 out of the lead. Rusty Wallace is looking for consistency, too. Many times this year, he's found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mistakes on pit road, 10 DNS, and Wallace is 14th in points. His lone moment in the sun, right here at Richmond, back in March, when he spun out early, but rallied to win the race. Wallace hopes to rally again tonight. And he hopes to rally in the car in which he ca which carried him to Victory Lane right at the Richmond International Raceway back in March. But this morning he avoided disaster when the 31 car touched his car, sent Rusty spinning, but he kept his car out of the wall. He is ready to go, all strapped up. Rusty, can you get back to Victory Lane tonight? I think I can. It's a great car. It's running good. Uh, let's get about 40 to 50 laps under our belt and find out where the chassis is right now, but I feel good about it. Rusty Wallace feels good about his chances. He rolls off 14th tonight. Perhaps the biggest mystery in modern-day motorsports unraveled this week when a woozy seven-time Winston Cup champion brushed the wall and left one at Darlington. Following hospitalization and extensive medical assessment, the final words came on Friday. You know, they've released me to race, and which is, which is great. But the, the greatest thing is that uh, I'm pretty confident in, in myself that uh, it, it's not going to happen again or I'm, I'm, you know, got anything wrong with me. So uh, they did everything they, you know, could do. And, uh, well, they didn't check me to see if I was pregnant. It must seem like an eternity, 50 races since Earnhardt's last hurrah. In more ways than one, tonight's race is the first step in his road to recovery. This last week has been difficult for Dale. He's had to do something very, very uncharacteristic. He had to be patient as a patient, waiting to find out exactly what it was that caused him to be so woozy. He was prodded and probed and pinched and punctured, but now all that's over. It's time to perform. Hey, Dale, millions want to know, is the man in black totally back? Uh, all right, he said, you better believe it. A more determined Dale Earnhardt, I have not seen, folks. There's a fire in this man's belly that only victory can put out. You talk about a mystery. This racetrack tonight, folks, could be a mystery. The folks here put a coating or a sealer on the racetrack, trying to get the cars a better grip, therefore making it more competitive. As the sealer wears off, 
What's the car going to do? No one really knows, Ned, but after all, this is a short track and close competition. Which means close competition and sometimes tempers can flare on a short track. Take last night, for instance. Joe Bessie flings his helmet right in the car of Dale Shaw. He thought that he put him out. Dale Shaw returns it to the racetrack a little bit later on. And, of course, uh, you never know what else might happen on a short track either. Like fire came up inside Mike McLaughlin's car. Lots of smoke, and, of course, where there is smoke, there is fire. But he was able to get the car halted and get out of the car okay. Always lots of action on the short track. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you live to Richmond International Raceway in Virginia for the NASCAR Winston Cup Backside NASCAR Select Batteries 400. After tonight, just eight races to go. Jeff Gordon's win at Darlington was worth a million dollars and a points lead by 25 over Mark Martin. Six in the top ten have won here. Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte, and Ted Musgrave have not. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins. Geographically, we're not very far from where we were last Sunday when there was a million dollars at stake, and, of course, Jeff Gordon won it. Tonight, there is not a million dollars at stake. The race is shorter. The track is smaller. But there are just as many points available to the drivers. And now the next focus of attention is the $1.5 million bonus that goes to the champion of the Winston Cup Series in 1997. Down to Bill Weber. Over the years, we've certainly seen some exciting winners go to victory lane on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit. But maybe it's those thrilling second-place finishes that haunt our memory forever. Such is the case, perhaps, for Jeff Burton. His first two wins came this season. But last week at Darlington, second to Jeff Gordon in his chase for the Winston Million. Problems in the pits might have cost Burton that win. So his team worked on that this week. And tonight, they hope to recapture what maybe was taken from them in Darlington last Sunday. It's a bright Saturday night in Jeff Burton's home state. If you're a fan of Jeff Burton, you better buckle up, Virginia. They say Richmond's a rough place to race if you're a new face. Unfortunately, no one told Kenny Irwin. This 28-year-old rookie starts his sword on the front row in his Winston Cup debut. Robert Yates wanted his newest hire just to come here and make the field. Tonight, he will help lead it toward the green flag. Rookie driver Robbie Gordon has shown flashes of brilliance this year. Remember, he won the pole at Atlanta back in March. Qualified fourth for tonight's race. But this morning, backed his car into the wall. They didn't want to go to a backup car and lose that good starting position. So Mike Hillman and the crew went to work, and they fixed his car. In fact, the rear flipped the rear frame. They had to bend it up four inches to keep it from dragging. So keep an eye on Robbie Gordon tonight, because they're not quite sure exactly how that car is going to run. 20 Fords will start tonight's race along with 14 Chevys and 8 Pontiacs. Ford is on top of the Manufacturer's Championship. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup. On the pole, Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia. Driving the Mac tonight colors and Kenny Irwin Jr. in his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. The second row, Bobby Hamilton, five consecutive top fives here and Robbie Gordon. In row number three, we have Kenny Wallace and Dick Trickle. In the fourth row, Joe Nemechek and David Green. Row number five, Ken Schrader and Jeff Gordon. The sixth row, the Burton brothers, Jeff on the inside, Ward on the outside. In the seventh row, Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. Take a look now at the rest of the starting lineup as the field warms up and should be going green next time around. Boy, you just can't ask for a more beautiful evening here in Virginia. The stands are full. Over 100,000 people have jammed into this magnificent facility here in, in Rico County, just outside the city limits of Richmond, and we are ready for some fantastic short track racing tonight. And Bob, there are a lot of drivers that are capable of winning this race that are starting way back in the field. Actually, there was just a fraction over a third of a second that separated first and last. Right along with Mark Martin, that's his onboard camera. There's Robbie Gordon's Coors Light Chevrolet. Pace car comes off turn four. He will be ducking down to the inside pit road. Here we go. Green flag is almost in the air. There it is. We're underway.
lap number one. Kenny Irwin Jr. from second uh, starting position is running in second spot. But a lot of side-by-side -side racing back in the middle and later part of the pack. Kenny Schrader in the 33 car gets down to the inside now. Mark Mark alongside Rusty Wallace. And they are bumping the bumpers. Jimmy Mayfield, 37, trying to push Rusty Wallace through the corner and by Mark Martin. Cars are getting a very, very good grip on the outside. It looks like we'll see two grooves all night. Kenny Wallace and Robbie Gordon in the battle for fourth position. As up front, we see Kenny Irwin trying to position himself to the inside of Bill Elliott. And this young man from Indianapolis, Indiana, is quite racy. He had several testing laps on this racetrack, plus he has run here in midgets and silver crown cars and in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. So Richmond International Raceway is not foreign to Kenny Irwin Jr. And the side-by-side -side battle between... And here up front, a better battle going on as Hamilton now gets down to the inside right behind Irwin. And Irwin and Elliott are side-by-side -side as they go down the backstretch. Well, that is quite a drive by a rookie driver. Irwin Jr. Now, Kenny, of course, will have full time in the 28 car next year with Robert Yates. They're going to run a few races here toward the end of the year to get him ex some experience. And now, looks like he's about to lose that second spot as Hamilton gets to the inside. We didn't. Get, we did not get past Bill Elliott and go on. He lost the second position to Bobby Hamilton. I say he lost it. He's Hamilton trying to take away, but Irwin doing a good job in that outside group. Actually, the outside group, back in the pack in particular, Benny, is uh, is even faster than the inside group. Boy, there's a lot of cars that are running side by side back in the pack. And the outside group. And Kenny Wallace, did he just flip the wall? He's on the outside. He's back on the outside. Well, that's what the word is. Meanwhile, both Dick Rickle and Jeff Burton get to the inside of him. And Robbie Gordon has also had a brush with the wall. Losing position, so something has been damaged on that car. Oh, and we're gonna spin Rusty Wallace. Yeah, you're two. clear. Just like last year. And all the other cars just stop. In all that smoke, they can't see, so they stop. The spring race was where he spun. So he'll have to do it again, huh? It will start dead last, just like he did in the spring. But in the spring, he was able to fight through the traffic, come back, and win the race. It happened on the same part of the racetrack. And so it's the same part of the racetrack in which he spun uh, this morning in practice, or this afternoon, a little bit further down the racetrack, out of turn two down the back stretch, but in the same general area. Let's take a look at it. He was three wide in that mess. He and Earnhardt makes contact, get in the corner, and when he turned away from Earnhardt to try to avoid spinning Earnhardt out, he actually spun himself. And then, when he nailed the gas, he throws up a smoke screen. Yes, he does. Well, let's see what happens to Kenny Wallace here in the square D Ford number 81. He gets on the inside of the 27 car of Kenny Irwin Jr. Gets a little bit loose. They made a little bit of contact, but Kenny is able to hold on. We thought he got in the wall, but he got down on the inside and got loose. And then Robbie Gordon comes up on the outside, and apparently he got into the wall a little bit. Down to Jerry Punch, who has a report on the 40 car. Well, Robbie's problem really wasn't as much wall contact as it was a problem up front in the engine compartment. Robbie has now taken the car, and you see him pulling the helmet off back in the garage area. Robbie radioed Mike Hillman a moment ago, and I think it may have been the harmonic balance or something in the front, possibly in the engine, but he thinks the engine may have come apart. That's why he's headed back to the garage area and now climbing out of the car. We head back up and check on Rusty Spitz with Bill Weber. Well, Rusty is here on pit road, and he will get four tires and fuel. Obviously, very similar, as Bob Jenkins pointed out, to what happened when uh, the spring race here at Richmond. The rights are already on, tightening the left side lug. Rusty's got the freshest tires and more fuel than anybody else. But I'll go all the way to the back. Uh, we've seen this story once before. We sure have, and it will be interesting to see if he can duplicate what he did here in the spring. Now, this one is from the uh, Rusty Wallace onboard camera. You see Ernie Irving diving down to the inside, and his three up press going down in turn one. And right here, we see the contact. And look at those, the smoke that he puts out when he nails the gas. Wally Dallenbach also spun, has been in for pit stops, but he too is ready to go with fresh tires. Well, he's back in right now. We'll take a break and be back with more in a moment.
holder of NASCAR's all-time speed record, Bill Elliott has become somewhat of an authority on speed. So when it's time for Bill to make a pit stop, he comes to the one place that... 15 laps completed here at Richmond, and Bobby Hamilton has taken second place from Kenny Irwin as we run a couple of laps now under the green flag. And check that guy in fourth spot. Jeff Burton moved into fourth. And Earnhardt trying to get by David Green and top going to the top ten if he can make that pass. Well, that's quite a move by Earnhardt. He started in 22nd position, so he is on a move. It was incredible the number of people that I ran into that I had never met before this past week, and they had one question they wanted to ask me. How is Dale Earnhardt? Uh, he's back. Here's John Kernan with Robbie Gordon. And Robbie has climbed out of his Coors Light machine. Robbie, engine problems? Yeah, sometimes engines. We're all really bummed. We had a pretty good race car. Thought that we were going to be pretty competitive in the long run. Uh, you know, the, the key in the beginning was to stick around and ride for 300 miles and then go racing from the end. It's unfortunate. The Coors car was running good this weekend. And we told you already about the problems they had this morning. The team works put the car back together, and then they have their night in a little bit early, Bob. We're watching this battle back here involving Jeremy Mayfield and others. Now we're riding with Hutt Strickland. He's up ahead is Ernie Irvin and Derek Cope. Side by side as they come down the front stretch. And oh, the 99 car goes around. Lots of cars behind him here. Take it off. Take it off. Don't let that pull by. And a collision at the bottom of the racetrack sends a couple of others. There's Ernie Irvin backing down the racetrack to see Steve Grissom sit in there sideways. Meanwhile, Irvin is still backing as the cars have taken the caution. And flag. Mark Martin was involved, Benny. Yes, he was. I don't know how much damage he's done to the Valvoline board, but he definitely, as you can see, he's coming on around the racetrack. He was right behind that. Record 10 cautions for the Bush Series event last night, and we've had two already here in the first 20 laps of this Winston Cup event. Well, now we've got two Jack Roush cars involved in the incident. You ever see the 99 car? He's trying to get by Kenny Irwin. He goes down the corner. Irwin comes down the hill. The 99 car just spins himself out trying to avoid spinning Kenny Irwin out. He goes up the racetrack, and now in all the smoke and sitting there, other cars try to take evasive action there we see Irwin and it looked like the 46 car was that darling back that was spun down there well we'll take another look as they come in there there's on the left side of the screen is Burton spinning Jeff Gordon goes by on the inside and then they start splitting back there and start slowing down and hitting each other Ernie Irvin goes around and Mark Martin the six car goes around Kyle Petty comes to a stop 41 car almost runs in the back, but he does stop. So it's Ernie Irvin that actually hit, that made contact with Martin Mark Martin. Martin. Yeah, and he hit him pretty good, too. Watch. See if we can see it from this angle. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Boy, we yeah. ran clear up on him, didn't he? Sure did. Bill Weber. Jeff Burton is in. He's got right side tires. They're putting on left side tires. His teammate Mark Martin has been in. And Mark's already left. Martin will come back in. Mark has sheet metal damage on the left rear quarter. But Burton's car looks okay. He's got four tires and two of them headed back out. Well, Mark Martin comes into this race just 25 behind Jeff Gordon. And, of course, Martin had the points lead going into Darlington last Sunday. On board with Mark. Listen and watch. side tires on that stop they tried to pull the sheet metal away but they wanted to get mark back out as quickly as possible Bill getting one to go this time by a lot of damage on that car my question is bill can they get gas in the car they spilled a lot of it there benny will check and then get back to you okay getting set to go back to green next time around john kernan Back in the garage area, Chad Little, this is, it ran into the back of someone when Rusty Wallace spun. It broke the radiator, so his crew is back here busy trying to replace the radiator. Meanwhile, Chad sits in his car waiting patiently, but it's going to take a few more laps to get the damage repaired. Here 
Jeff Burton is back in the pits once again as they try to get the sheet metal away from the tire, Bill. That's exactly right. Wanted to check the sheet metal one more time before Jeff went back out on the track. So they yanked that away. He's got the four fresh tires. And as soon as we get back to green, we'll have an idea how that car is going to handle. Green flag comes out. Back to racing once again as Bill Elliott continues to lead here. He's led every lap so far. And there are 24 complete for green on lap 25. Jeff Gordon on the outside. Now Gordon gets up the outside line. Kenny Wallace into 81 down on the inside. And Dale Earnhardt is right there in that pack up on the outside of Dick Trickle. Dale Earnhardt has made a masterful drive towards the front. He sure has. He is up to eighth position already. on the right indicate their starting position. So Dale Earnhardt is up to seventh from a 22nd starting position. And we're watching Dick Trickle work the outside of Kenny Wallace. And back up front, the battle continues as Bobby Hamilton tries once again to get to the inside of Bill Elliott, but Elliott holds him off down the back stretch. Like Ricky Rudd, but in fact, it's Darrell Walton with one of his 25th anniversary paint jobs. That could be confusing during the evening. David Green right behind him. He has Mark Green, his brother, standing by in case David needs relief. Of course, he broke his shoulder blade earlier in the year. That was a Christmas. Yep. A couple weeks ago. Okay, Hamilton now has a run on Elliott. Let's see if he can do anything here in the... Seems like that inside groove, they're having trouble getting traction as they come off the turn. And the middle groove is the one that works best. But now he gets a little more up alongside off two. But look at Elliott, he pulls away once again. Well, he gives Bobby Hamilton almost enough room down there, but <laughs> not quite. Keeps him pinched down just enough that he can't get a good run off the corners. Elliott led the most laps last week at Darlington, 181. This is the 11th race of the year that Elliott has led. But Hamilton continues to try to press all the way. And Dale Earnhardt is moving around Jeff Gordon as we watch this battle for the lead. And he has made that pass. How many laps is this? Four or five laps have been side by side. Neither one able to get that advantage. And Dave Schrader's going to have to get by the 42 car. Joe Nemechek moving into fourth spot. Nemechek is fifth, then Earnhardt, then Gordon. And back of Jeff Gordon, we have Dick Prickle. Kenny Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield, those are your top ten. 33 laps completed here at Richmond International Raceway. Bill Elliott leads the Exide NASCAR Select Batteries 400. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway. 38 laps completed. Bill Elliott continues to hang on to that lead. As a matter of fact, uh, Hamilton is not challenging as much as he was earlier. We let the whole pack go through here and pick up on the side-by-side -side battle, but the best side-by-side -side battle, or at least the best battle on the racetrack, is up in front. And Hamilton once again goes to the inside. And Kenny Irwin up to slip and a little bit that time. Seventh position as we watch this battle up front is Jeff Gordon and Dr. Jerry Punch has a report. Of course, 
Jeff had made a move toward the front, but now he's lost a couple of spots. The big thing people are fighting today is they were tight in the middle of the corner and then loose coming off. Jeff's problem right now is he is tight in the middle of the corner and even tighter coming off. The car just moves right up across the racetrack, the nose. He cannot get the car to turn, but when the track gets slipperier as the race progresses, he should be in pretty good shape. Kenny Schrader moves into third position, and Kenny has a good early run going. Yes, he does, and he's running up on the outside, Bob, in that outside groove, which is a good sign. If you have a car that'll work up there this early in the race, hey, he might be trouble. And Schrader, it looks like, is going to be the fastest that last lap, and now he's going to try the high side around the 43. But look at the 25 car who takes honors for the fastest lap running back in 17th position. Yeah, and he had a good clear racetrack that time by, and uh, he has been very good when he's running in a clear racetrack by himself on that Ricky Craven. I tell you what, it, folks, it doesn't get much better than this, and it looks like Hamilton may have it. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, no, here comes Bill back on the outside again. But not, this time going into the turn. And this yeah. time Hamilton just drives him up yeah. the racetrack. Tried to lean on him just a little bit, and he's there. That Bobby Hamilton is our second leader of the evening, and Hamilton is no slouch on this racetrack. He finished seventh here a year ago in this race, and he finished fifth here in the spring. Two top fives, five top tens, and 12 starts here for Bobby Hamilton, the leader of the race. Now here's sixth and seventh. Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon. Gordon has caught back up to Earnhardt. Earnhardt had passed him, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. But now Gordon has caught back up to him. Dick Trickle riding along right there behind him in the 90 car. And let's congratulate Larry and Linda McReynolds, uh, the proud parents of a baby girl born this morning. Congratulations, Larry and Linda. Yep. yep. That's terrific. As of uh, broadcast time, they hadn't chosen a name yet, so we'll give that to you next week. Jerry, maybe you can help us. Well, when Larry got back here, they, they just were able to make the name public, and it is Mary Kendall McReynolds, and they will call her Kendall. She was nine pounds, one ounce, born at 12.15 p.m. today. He was back at the racetrack at 3 o'clock. Well, congratulations to the new parents of the baby girl. See this battle continuing to be a pretty good one. Now look at Gordon sneak up on the back of Dale. Hey, that tight situation that they talked about a little bit earlier in the center of the corner, track might be coming to him a little bit now, or the car coming to the track. As the tires get worn, that might be working to his advantage now. We're talking about Jeff Gordon coming back up on Dale Earnhardt. 99 car has been moving up quickly from his spin from the back of the pack. He is up to where? 24th. 24th. Jimmy Spencer in the 23 car is in 23rd position. And his next car, Mark Martin, is the next car behind. Ever seen Mark? He and Jeff Burton's team make both of them back there side by side. And meanwhile, Jeff Gordon on the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, this racetrack is really, really worth it right now. There is two distinct grooves out there. I think the sailor that they put on it did its job. Dick Trickle is hanging right there with Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. He runs an eight spot. High overhead from the Pennzoil Pocker can. Great overhead shot. Bobby Hamilton has just driven away from Bill Elliott since he made the pass. As a matter of fact, he has over a second and a half lead on Elliott right there. You see the lead that he has. And Irwin got back by Kenny Schrader back in the third spot. And he, he's hung in there all night. That Bell South Chevy, he had a fire this afternoon. <laughs> Burned the hood, some of the wires under the hood. Whoa. Irwin a little loose coming off the corner. David Blair Motorsports car, not uh, anything that has to do with Robert Yates. Well, it's a Yates car. Yeah. It's been fielded by the David Blair team. Yeah, it has a Robert Yates engine, so yeah, it has a good bit to do with, with Yates.
brings up on the outside. And here comes front row Joe. Knee check on the inside. Now look at Kenny Schrader. Bill's going to fall back to fourth here. Maybe fifth. All this from the Pennzoil Copter Cam hovering over Richmond International Raceway. So we'll be back with more live action in this 24th NASCAR Winston Cup race of the 1997 season. This race here in Richmond, Rusty Wallace on lap number eight, as a matter of fact, was the meet in an Ernie Irvin and Dale Earnhardt sandwich in turn two. It sent Rusty spinning and sending up a huge cloud of smoke. And it also brought him in for a pit stop, and he had to drop to the rear of the field. Then we had another caution, and since the restart from that caution, Rusty Wallace has picked up 10 positions. He was 28th when the restart occurred, and he is now up in 18th spot. And you know what? In the top 10 tonight, there was C.V. Mark Martin trying to get by Rusty Wallace. He's been involved in a crash. This is a battle for the 18th spot. And Mark Martin looks like we'll take it away from Rusty Well. Might have spoken too soon. But right now, you look at those cars in the top ten. Jeff Gordon, the only car that's won a race in 1997. How about that? Yeah. There's the 25 car of Richard Craven. We talked about earlier how that Bud Chevrolet was running, but now his tires have gotten older. Now, both Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin have fresher tires than the 25 car of Richard Craven. John Kernan? Ricky radioed into his crew about five laps ago and said the car is getting really loose going in and really loose coming off the turn. So he can't wait to have a pit stop. Pete from the pit stop, Huck Strickland, is headed down pit road, but they'll tighten Ricky's car up on his first scheduled stop. The 99 and the 88 cars are in a lot of traffic, but they're moving up. Dale Jarrett is back in 13th position, and is there in 15. I think the story in that group is Bill Elliott. Yeah, he's our, going back. Our post hitter is really, really struggling now just to keep up. And Ted Musgrave is caught up with him and almost runs in the back of Elliott. Jerry, what's wrong with Bill Elliott? Well, Mike Beam asked him what the problem was, and Bill said, loose, loose. Mike asked him where, and Bill said, everywhere, all around the racetrack. Three more spots as Derek Cope gets by the Skittles car, then Jarrett, then Musgrave. There's Jeff Burton's progress since the restart. He was 40th on lap 25, and here on the 66th, he's 15th and moving up. Well, I thought this one three or three for a second. I said, I don't know if that'll work as old as these tires are now, but uh, they singled out or got at least two wide. Martin and Rusty Wallace. Ted Musgrave up in 13th spot, starting in 38. I don't know if he's going to start with some rules still on there, but I don't think Musgrave is in the pitch. I don't think so either, Denny, and, and so he has made a great drive towards the front. Ernie coming back up in the 28 car. He has been in the pit, so he had newer tires. So you see Terry Labonte coming off the corner. Terry is in 21st position. I had to look and see what car that was behind him. It is Gerald Walker. There's our leader. And you know what? He's losing some ground to Kenny Irwin. Kenny Irwin is gaining. He, the 43 car had about a three-second lead. It's now down to less than two seconds. That's the fourth-place car of Jeff Gordon running in third is Joe Nemechek. The 
interval is about 1.6 seconds from first to second. And it's about 5.2 seconds back to Jeff Gordon. Bobby Hamilton leads. 72 laps have been completed. We'll take a break and be back with more of our live coverage. Kenny Urban is second, and Nima Check Gordon and Dick Trickle completes the top five. Back in just a moment. Bobby Hamilton leads the Excise NASCAR Select Batteries 400 here at Richmond. At the back of the pack and pick up on this battle. That's Dale Jarrett and uh, Rusty, who wears it? 14th spot. And Jeff Burton going by his brother Ward. And let's see. Moves him up to seventh. Wow. Now we timed lap 73 through 77 to see if Jeff was closing in on uh, Bobby Hamilton in the leader, and indeed he has. He closed in 1.3 seconds, as you can see. Meanwhile, Hamilton is involved in some traffic now as Kenny Irwin has closed in within a car length. Obviously, these cars are from Darling back and Michael Walker both want to stand the lead lap if they can leader in trying to do that and that's allowed Kenny Irwin to catch up although Irwin has been faster. Well there comes a real group. <laughs> well they are been really going at it. Now Hutt Strickland's been in the pit in eight cars so he just drove through this whole pack of cars in about three laps. Fastest car that last lap was Jeff Burton and his teammate Mark Martin was in the second. Well, make that uh, the nine car of Lake Speed. How about that? Wow. And Earnhardt's car has gone away. The three car of Earnhardt, his tires are really heated up and getting worn now. It's cost him on the racetrack. Wow, look at that 99 car. And the 40, evidently the 24 car was caught in some traffic that time. Bill Weber? Earnhardt Chevrolet is very loose. They will make a track car adjustment. Three rounds when he pits, maybe around a lap 100. Right now, Bill Elliott on pit road. Did very fun. 35 miles an hour. Bill Elliott could not wait any longer. The car just got so loose, he could not drive it. They were going to make a major chassis adjustment. Air pressure change. They will change the track bar. They're changing right side tires. They're on lap number 84. Another match tonight, McDonald's Group. The left front. The brakes are very, very hot. They hear that glowing as now they put the left side cars on. He is down and away. As Jerry said, Bill Elliott could not. And here comes Kenny Irwin for the lead on turn four. Wow. He's going into turn number one, but of course he'll have to cross the line to get credit for it. Quite an impressive performance by the young man from Indiana. Here's Mark Martin and Kenny Schrader as they race for eighth spot. They don't race anymore. Mark Martin has it. The Schrader was up there heading for the lead not too long ago, but apparently the handle's gone away on his Chevrolet. His tires get heated up. Right now, Kenny Schrader is over eight seconds behind the leader, Kenny Irwin. And here's Rusty Wallace. He's got the Kenny Schrader car. Well, there's a lot of them really fighting it now. As the tires are worn down, we run 88 laps or 87 laps. We'll check the speed next time around to see how much they have dropped off speed-wise. See the leader going in in the turn one as he goes by Dolan back and see the 99 of uh, Jeff Burton is still over 115, but the others have dropped down to 113. Michael Walker just going out of the pits and he said go forward. He's changing the tires. One problem that the leaders have now is the traffic of Wally Dolan trying to get by them. That's one thing that's slowing them down and allowing 
these guys can literally catch up. Here's Burton going by Gordon. He'd like to make that pass last Saturday, or last Sunday, wouldn't he? Yeah, wouldn't he do? So Jeff Burton remains the fastest car on the racetrack at the moment, but we should be seeing the first regular round of pit stops before too long. Back in Richmond in just a moment. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway, where the XI NASCAR Select Battery 400 is 94 laps old. And race coverage tomorrow will include the Grand Prix of Italy Formula One event. That's on at 7.45 Eastern Time over on ESPN2. John Lacey will lead them to the green flag. Carts on the grid at 2.30 on the deuce, and then the Toyota Grand Prix of Monterey at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Bill Weber. The Goodwin's crew had wanted to wait till lap 102 to bring Dale Earnhardt in, but they couldn't do that anymore. The car was too loose. They'll make the track guard just as we talked about. Earnhardt has sheet metal damage on the left door. That's from early in the race. Right side tires are on. Left side tires on quickly. They tighten the lug nut. Fuel is in down and heads back out on the track. Good pit stop for these guys. Jeff Burton is also on pit road. Oh, no, no. He's going for the lead. Caught Kenny Irwin Jr. and moved to the inside. And he's going to motor right on by. This time. Wow. What a run by 99. Spun earlier, has fought his way back through the traffic, and has taken the lead. The X side battery. Of course, this is the X side. Sterling Marlin goes out of the pits. He's been in for service. Ricky Rudd has also made a pit stop. Jimmy Spencer coming in right now. These are all scheduled pit stops. Some in earlier than others because they just simply couldn't stay out there on those tires slipping and sliding. Let's go to the pits and John Turner. Jimmy Spencer in. We'll make a track bar adjustment of four tire change as they raise the track bar quite a bit. Right side, they're on. They come around to the left side. You can actually see sparks coming off they take off the lug nuts. Now they put the left side was tightening them up. He's down and away. He just took the last lap on the racetrack, and it's probably cost him at least one more lap. Now Jeff Gordon has caught Bobby Hamilton. Boy, Hamilton's car has really gone away now. As we see Darrell Walter come in the pit, Bobby, Bobby Levine is in the pits. Rick Mask is in the pits. There's the Interstate Batteries Pontiac of Bobby Labotti. Left side going on that car. Get in the fuel of, full of fuel. Ken Schrader comes down pit road as Labotti goes out. There's Darrell Walter. Made a chassis adjustment on him. He's getting four tires. Ken Schrader's made it to his pit. Let's go to the pits and Bill Weber. And Ken Schrader already has the right side tires on. Now getting the left side tires and fuel. No chassis adjustment for Schrader. Lug nuts are on and routine pit stop for Ken Schrader in the full Chevrolet. The seven car also on pit road now. Pete Allen back sitting there putting left sides on the first union Chevrolet as Jeff Bodine takes the PDC board. Off pit road, here comes Kenny Wallace, a great qualifying run. He'll bring his square D car to pit road. And it'll be four tires, almost guaranteed. I almost bet my life on that. <laughs> yep. Dale Jarrett comes down pit road. Bill Weber is there. Dale Jarrett is on pit road, 103 laps in the book. They'll make a track bar adjustment a quarter round and go up on the fight one round on the quality care floor. Right side tires going on. Now around to the left side. Jarrett sits in the car. Being topped off with fuel. Bobby Hamilton crawls by to DJ's right. Waiting on the lug to be tightened. They clean the grill. Now Jarrett's away. Now pit road is very fun. No one has won more at Richmond than Richard Petty, 13 times, and now his SCP Pontiac comes to a halt on pit road. They will make a track bar adjustment, go down on the track bar in the right rear. They will go off 
up on the air pressure in the right rear and down on the air pressure in the left rear. Right side tires are on. Water bottle comes out. They clean the windshield. Left front. Left rear lug nuts are on. It's full of fuel. And Tom Campbell will now come over the left rear. They pull it down and away. The 42 car is also in. Joe Nemechek, likewise. Jeff Gordon in getting service. Right behind Nemechek. Both two. Now to the left side. A couple of Chevrolets fitting nose to tail. Left front. Left rear tires going on the 42. And the 24. And pit road and the 27 cars on pit road Kim the air when you see him there the right side of the big team going on the left side jerry punch and he almost stalled the car coming in he got in a pit right before he was stopping the car almost went right side tires now left side tires jeff clark the jack man trouble with the left side now the car is down and away so jeff burton continues to lead but he can stay out there a little while, at least as far as fuel is concerned. But he might not want to stay out there with these other tires with new other cars with new tires on them, because uh, that's going to cost him. As you see, those cars of Bobby Hamilton, Dale Jarrett, just driving right on by. Now they were two laps down, so they've got in position. They're just one lap down now. But here is the car number 31 of Mike Skinner in the pit. But uh, uh, Jeff Burton can't afford to stay out there too long as these other cars are running the speed they are. Let's go to the pit for Jerry Punch. Well, Mike Skinner began the night pitting up toward turn four, but when the car number 40 had been retired, they had doubled up their pit. They have now moved down here toward turn one. Left side tires going on to car number 31. A low Chevrolet 21.3. And now Burton is in in front of Bell. 109 laps on the board. They told Jeff Burton, you pit when the front runners do. He got trapped out last time, but now he's on pit road. Rusty Wallace is on pit road, three cars behind him. Right side tires now for the 99. Rusty also getting his right side tires. Now they swing around to left sides on the 99 XI Ford. One tire gets away, kicks back to the crew lane, gobble it up and hold it on the sidelines. Lugs are tight. Good stuff for these guys who struggled last week. Now Rusty Wallace waiting on the left side tires. that we need to keep an eye on for the rest of this race. This is the right front tire off of Jimmy Spencer's car. About 20 laps before pit stops, he radioed in and told the crew, I think I've worn out the right front. And you can see, yes, he has on the inside of the right front tire, all the way down to the steel belted radials, right on this side, it's all worn out. Let's go down to Bill Weber. 110 laps now on the board, and Mark Martin creeps down pit road, so he too has dodged a bullet. Coming in with the leaders after getting fresh tires following an earlier spin. Still has damage on the left rear quarter. Getting fuel in is not a problem on this car. Right side tires going on. Chassis adjustment, a round and a half. Come around to the left front. Now a swing around to the left rear. Jack slides underneath. Babylon Ford goes in the air. Left front tire on. Left rear tire on. Waiting for the lugs on the left rear. Plenty of fuel in the car now. Mark Trump thinks that he's on his way. 24 seconds even, I believe, on the clock. Speed comes on pit road. He has been the leader. That's the first time that the Melling car led the, a race all this year. John Kernan. Lake Speed pulls into his pit stall. Now the front tire carrier fell, but it shouldn't hurt him too badly. No, well, he gets the tire there just in time, but the right front tire is on top of the air hose. Now one of the moves it away. Right sides are on. They swing around to the left side. We haven't seen any chassis adjustment as yet. Second can of fuel going in. It is full of fuel. Lake Speed waiting, waiting as they hit the lugs of the air and tell it to go. 21.7. Pretty good stop by Lake Speed's guys. And you know, it looks like that that spin out that Jeff Burton, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, it looks like that that really truly did not hurt them. No, it, I don't think it hurt them at all, uh, Benny. They were able to put new tires on, come back up towards the front. They had pressure tires all the time. 
and we see clearly, and Lake Speed will go a lap down, down there, I guess. A lap down now. Jeff Burton, after all this round of pit stops, Jeff Burton is the lead. And you see the autos on off track interval. Jeff Burton, Mark Martin. Jeff Burton spent 83 seconds. He crossed the start finish line. The next time he came by, went in the pit, did his pit work, came back out and then crossed the start finish line again. That took 83.6 seconds. It took Mark Martin 89.4 seconds. A almost six second advantage for the 999 car over Mark Martin. positions to the lead now and has about a 1.3 second advantage on Jeff Gordon. It's almost reminiscent of Rusty Wallace in the spring when he spun almost exactly the same spot, went on to win the race. I see Bobby Labonte, the 18 car, the 33 car of Kenny Schrader. We'll remind you that Rusty Wallace also spun earlier in the race. He is running at 11th position. This is 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Ken Schrader, 21st, Terry Labotti, and Bobby Labotti. And Lake Speed right up in front of them. We saw him make a pit stop. He was leading the race and uh, had to come back into the pit, John Kernan. And at first, and at first uh, Lake thought he had a right front tire going down. But when they came in and changed tires, the crew found that they'd actually put a left front tire on the right front. So they made a mistake here in the pits, and it cost them at least a lap. I guess that's one disadvantage of nighttime. And they're trying to get three abreast going down the corner. That's not probably a good plan. Well, there are a lot of cars there racing for position. There they go again. Trying to go three abreast. Kenny Schrader says, I better get out of here. That's not work. The shot from high overhead, Richmond International Raceway, courtesy of the fine folks at Pennzoil. It's the Pennzoil Copter Cam. Ted Musgrave. Car does, does not seem to be handling as it did before. I'm sorry, that was Bill Ellis' car, not Musgrave. My mistake. Wally Dahlenbach just got up high in the second turn. I don't know whether he hit the wall, but if he didn't, he came darn close. I believe he did, Bob. He had slowed dramatically on the racetrack, so he had to go in the wall. He's headed to the pitch. You see smoke coming up the right side where the sheet metal is rubbing against the tire. In fact, is that right front tire? I thought it might be flat, but you can see that, uh, yeah, he has been into the wall. slow on the racetrack for some reason now he's backed up to speed all these cars they will get by late speed and there's their leader jeff burton as he goes by trying to go by the pole sitter bill elliott to put him a lap down that would be 24 spot elliott's running in and now just 23 cars in the lead lap man and bill was so strong at the first of the race and now goes a lap down he told us on Let's see if we can see what happens. Oh, there's Jolly back up against the wall as he comes off turn two. Yeah, he got into it pretty good, and he needed to come to the pits. Let's see if we can see what happens to Lake Speed. He's the red car up there right in front of Kenny Schrader. The green car, number 33, they get together just a little bit. Speed does a good job of hanging on and not getting that call in, car into the wall. And here's Martin Martin working on Dale Earnhardt. That's a battle for 16th spot. Going by for Trader is in 15th spot. You see Chad Little had him in the garage area late earlier on fixing a broken radiator. He's now back in the race and he's what, 86 last down there? 86 
eight laps down. 22 cars on the lead lap. Roger Labonte now is the last car as Sterling Marlin has just on the lap down to Jeff Burton. Check the speeds with the line, see how they're running now. Tires, uh, you know, got good tires, 116.9 for Burton. Gordon not too far behind him. And look at the deal. Jared that time had the fastest speed, 117.23. As you go back to the field. So far, Dale Jared's speed is the fastest time. Jeff Bodine, they're in the QBC Ford number seven, running in fourth place. John Kernan, can you add more? Well, I came up to check with the crew to see if they had done a two-tire change because they picked up so much ground. They came in running in the fifth spot after starting 31st on their pit stop in lap 103, a few laps before some of the other cars, and they took on four tires, made no changes in just a little over 20 seconds, but they went out in the fifth position. Jeff running a few laps before some of the other leaders came in for their pit stops was running much faster, so he gained a lot of time out there on the track. So good, smart strategy coming in the pit just a few laps before the leaders. And once again, Dale Jarrett will show the fastest lap. We'll check them again as they go by. Don't think you'll get it this time, Benny. It's uh, behind those couple of cars there. John and Reddy in number 98 and Rick Mast in number 75. And Reddy is one lap down in 29th position, and so is uh, Rick Mast. He's one lap down. And, well, he's in 29th now, and, and Reddy moved up to 28. Now we go back to find that Ted Musgrave had the fastest speed that time. We'll try it once again. Couple, that works out. A couple of cars on pit road. Tess Brickland had stopped earlier than everybody else before, and Jeff Green also is in the pits now. Wow, the 99 car ran 117.157 miles per hour. Jerry Punt? Hey, just a moment ago, Buddy Parrot radioed uh, Jeff Burton and said he was a little bit concerned about using up the race car. It wasn't anything but uh, just silence for a moment, and then Jeff Burton radioed back and said, Hey, Buddy, I'm just riding. Well, that's nice to be able to do that, run as fast as he is and not straining the car whatsoever. And Kenny Slater, who ran so well earlier on, looks like he's in jeopardy of going a lap down in 20 spots. He's the green car, right in, not that green car that Burton is passing, that's Chad Little, but the next green car there is Kenny Slater, the number 33 stole car, and Terry Lavati. The defending Winston Cup champion is not far up there either in the five car. Jeff Burton has about a two and a half second lead on Jeff Gordon as 143 laps are completed at the X Guide NASCAR Select Veterans 400. It's a Saturday night, and where better to be than a second advantage on Jeff Gordon. Now take a look at the fastest laps that have been turned in tonight. Jeff Burton has the five fastest laps. Really, there are only four drivers in that list that have the top ten speeds. How about that? Jeff Burton on lap 27 ran the fastest lap of the race, 120.5. You know, last week at Darlington in the Southern 500, I looked this week, the fastest lap was run by Jeff Gordon on lap 304. So that, those guys, the Rainbow Warriors, kept working on that car, working on it, and finally, by 304, he was able to turn the fastest lap. And there he is, Jeff Gordon, I was talking about. Jerry Punch. Tonight, we told you Jeff Gordon had a problem with the car being very, very tight early on. Now, during that pit stop, it's in the rubber out of the right front, and the car has been driving very well, although just recently, Dallas McLean has been 
car has gotten loose in the right rear coming off the corner. As Bill Elliott comes back in the pits, the pole sitter brings his car back down pit road for an unscheduled stop. $98,800 worth of Unical bonus money is up for grabs here. Bill Elliott is the eligible driver. And the guy who started on the outside of the front row beside Bill, Kenny Irwin Jr., in his Winston Cup debut, is hanging in there in sixth spot. Yes, I'm impressed with Kenny Irwin. You see Rusty and Dale Earnhardt, the three car, the good red Chevy, has gone a lap down to the leader, Jeff Burton. And right now, Earnhardt is running in 17th spot. David Green goes another lap down in the cat car number 96. David is in 38th position, four laps down. And Jeff Burton, this team, this year, Buddy Parrott, Jeff Burton, when he started all those guys, have been so impressive with the job they've done in 1997. We see Jeff Bodine, Dale Jarrett battling for the fourth spot. And we see Sterling Marlinfield off coming down pit road. Oh, some contact between Brett Bodine, the 11th car, and Dale Jarrett. We see Bill Elliott, the pole sitter, just made that stop, so he's got those fresh tires. He should pass these guys fairly easy. Oh, yeah, he'll blow them right off. And there's a battle for uh, Richmond. That's 11, 12, 13, 14. The 90 car went in this battle running 11. I think it's going to be running about 14. Ricky Rudd in the 10 car is not in the lead lap for these cars. Ricky is one lap down in 29th position. Jeff Gordon on the four seconds now. Jimmy Wallace has now gone a lap down, so they're only 15 cars on the lead lap. And that 25 car right there, Ricky Craven, would be the next car to go a lap down, and the, the leader's not too far behind him. Man. Man. This would be a pretty special victory for Jeff Burton. Exide sponsoring the race, also sponsored this car. He grew up in South Boston, Virginia, about 70 miles down the road from Richmond. Bill Weber. And BP, plenty of family and friends here for Jeff Burton as well, but it's not only how fast you go here at Richmond, sometimes it's how fast you stop. And Buddy Parrott has warned his driver about his brakes. He just told Jeff he's setting a good pace, but don't forget about the brakes. Start letting off as early as you're comfortable. Let the brakes get some air. They will make an air pressure adjustment during their next pit stop. Dr. Jerry Pond. Well, Bill Elliott made that unscheduled stop, and he may have a problem. He told you about how loose the car was. He made an adjustment on his first stop, and it didn't help the car at all. He just came back in. They unhooked the sway bar, changed the right side tires, and took the rubber out of the right. And it still really hasn't helped very much. My team thinks they may have a problem with a broken ratchet in the rear end. of this race, but now has dropped way back to 36th position. Talk about using the brakes, and at night, you can see exactly what they're talking about. As Jeff Burton goes down the corner, just a moment ago, I could see the rotor. See the rotor? Cherry red, he goes down in the corner. That's what he's talking about, being easy on the brakes. They just develop a tremendous amount of heat because there's just no room to through the brakes. They run air hoses on the right front, back to the brakes, and the straightaways are just so short. Watch that rotor that goes down the corner. See if that rotor is cherry red. Four laps completed here at a sold-out Richmond International Raceway as over a hundred thousand people have gathered to watch this NASCAR Winston Cup event. Back in a moment.
lights of the city of Richmond, Virginia. And Richmond International Raceway is located just outside the city limits and in Ryko County. In these overhead shots, courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. And well, Chad Little has fun. Caution is out. That damage he did earlier. And here comes Jeff Burton. And Ricky Craven will not get a lap back. Burton will put him a lap down. And Bobby Hamilton, we see the SVP Pontiac, ran so well. The next car to go a lap down, he'll get to make up three quarters of a mile as he closes it on the back of the field. Coming out of turn two, we'll see him come into the frame by himself right there and just loses it around the John Deere Pontiac goes down to the inside retaining what well yeah there he hit it with the left front just touch it with the left front so you can see all that damage to the nose of the car happened earlier in the race boy a lot of guys have said thank goodness that caution play yeah they want to get on pit road and get on some new tires and the pit stops are happening now adjustment on the left rear as you see the 924 and the 42 and there's the 99 pulling away jerry punch uh, the 24 and 99 are side by side Nemechek is now down and it looks like it'll be a 10 even heat looks like a 24 may have a shot nascar will have to make the call gordon with just a little bit slower overall pit stop because he was further down uh, he may have got the lead from jeff but jeff is uh, in front of him out there on the back stretch well, as, as Jerry said, NASCAR will make that decision and they'll put the cars wherever they need to go to be aligned properly. Those 13 cars on the lead lap came in that time and made pit stops. There you see other cars coming in that are one or more laps down coming into the pits. Tough break for Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott made a green flag pit stop. And here's the 27 car of Kenny Irwin. And did he miss the pits, Jerry, the first time or failed to come in? Yeah, Ned, that's a rookie mistake. Unfortunately, he did not hear or, or heed the pit call. In fact, they, when they were here two weeks ago testing, he ran 300 laps. And part of what they looked at was how to get on and off pit road. The first time he came in and pitted, he stopped too soon in someone else's pit. This time, he missed the pit call. Obviously, a rookie mistake, but he will learn. Circle by Hasbro, the sponsor on Kenny Irwin's car this race, and I think the other four races in 1997. Caution is out here at Richmond International Raceway once again because of an incident on the back stretch involving Chad Little. We'll be right back. And Sunday night baseball. Well, all the adjustments have been made. We'll see who now is going to have the fastest car. On a caution flag, it'll take a little more time. On lap 172, this is what brought out the caution flag. Look at Chad Little, the car right in front of Body to Body. He gets a little loose off the corner, and around he goes. The body didn't even have to crack the throttle. Another view. Watch the car as he comes off the corner, just to lose his control. When he gets this position, he nails the gasoline. Trying to keep it off the wall, he keeps the rear off the wall, but the front just still touches it ever so gently. John Kernan has a report. The front tire changer on Steve Grissom's car, George Gazelski, has a new air gun this pit stop. That's because on the last pit stop, this sheared off. Look at this, where the socket connects to the anvil, the shaft right here. He had four lug nuts off the left front tire, and then boom. It sheared right off. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that happen before. Do you guys? Don't think I have. Nope. That is rare. Still under caution, so we'll sneak in another commercial break here with 178 laps completed at Richmond. And right now, we have Jeff Burton leading the race, the 99 car. 24 car Jeff Gordon in second, and Joe Nemechek in third. Meanwhile, the 25 and 
five. Both those cars have gotten by the 99, back on the tail end of the lead lap, and they want to stay there. But right now, they're holding up Jeff Burton a little bit. 25 car of Richard Craven has pulled away a little bit, but both the 5 and 25 cars are teammates of Jeff Gordon, and uh, he said, hey, get me a little bit here, let me uh, catch up, and I need to lead a lap. I don't think Gordon's led a lap here, there's a dog. Uh, no. Six leaders so far, Burton, Elliott, Hamilton, Irwin, Speed, and Martin, and uh, Jeff has led the most 83. And counting. Jeff Burton, you mean? That's what I said, isn't it? And Jeff Burton, yeah. Gordon has to let him out. That's true. And there's almost a battle for the fourth spot, and it is a battle. As Dale Jarrett gets on the inside of Jeff Bodine. He'll take that spot away. Bodine will dive down. Oh, not quick enough. Jimmy Spencer gets on the inside. Spencer is not on the lead lap. Well, he's a lap down. In the 16th position, he's the first car that's uh, left down. 37th car there. He is on the lead lap. Jer Jeremy Mayfield he is on the right on the lead lap. He's in sixth position. So he and Jeff Bodine battling for position as Dale Earnhardt, the good red Chevy, tries to march his way towards the front. He's in the UC7 spot. Rusty Wallace is in eighth. Ted Musgrave in ninth catches the apron with the left front tire as he tried to exit turn four. Almost got sideways. Oh, somebody must be on the inside of him as he drifts up the racetrack. So check the speed as they go by. We see it. 119 miles per hour for the 99 car. That was the fastest speed recorded in that lap. Dale Jarrett had the second fastest speed. He's got Jimmy Spencer right on his back bumper trying to move around. He said it's a lap down. Ernie Irving just tried the lap car of Bill Elliott. During that last round of caution flag pit stops, the front tire changer for the Texas Ohio Haviland Ford, Robbie Hancock, was clipped by Mark Martin as Mark pulled into pit row. Now, apparently, Robbie was briefly trapped underneath the car when Mark went by his leg, but he's okay for now. They've been able to walk to the ambulance, and they took him to the Indian Care Center. Uh, he is replacing Joey Knuckles, who recently left the team. This is his first race since 2018. He has been changing tires for 14 years, and I've just been told that Mark Reno, the crew chief, will replace Robbie Hancock on the next pit stop. But he was able to walk to the ambulance. He's being examined in the infield care center. Wow. Ernie Irvin started 40th. At one time was 40th position, is now in seventh spot. And we saw him jump in here when he ran in the back of Mark Hart. You see the damage on the right side of the Texaco Ford, number 28. And that's where he got into Mark Martin, went off the ground, as Benny said, and stayed on the lead lap. And now he runs right up there with the leader. Won this race a year ago. So he knows how to get around here. All three of those cars battled for position. 7, 37, 28. Now back to leader, you know, he's pulled away from Jeff Gordon, but meanwhile, those cars that are out in front of him, Craven and Labonte are pulling away from the leader. Buddy Parrott has told Jeff Burton, he said, hey, Jeff, you simply have to save your tires. Jeff Gordon is just laying back there waiting on you to burn them up. He said, no, in 10 to 15 more laps, your tires will be coming in and you'll be great. Right front tire. He comes off 
turn four a little bit higher than he has been. He goes in turn one, and, and he also drifts up the racetrack just a little bit. Looks like he's listening to him, Jerry. Wife Brooke looks on as Jeff runs in second spot here this evening. As we are nearing the halfway point in just three more laps, we'll be at halfway. Jeff Burton leads at Richmond International Raceway. Back at Richmond, where we've completed now 203 laps, so we're past halfway. Jeff Burton was the leader at the halfway point, and seven times the leader at the halfway point has gone on to victory. Here is Jeff Gordon, who runs second, a little more than three quarters of a second behind Jeff Burton. Jimmy Spencer lap down. Never seen a 42 car. Joe Nemechek, Bell South car, in third spot. Dale Jarrett, fourth quality here. Carl will run in fourth spot. He's running in the fifth spot in the car number seven. Ernie Irvin moved up to six. That one four. Kenny Schrader's a lap down in the stole car. We see Jeremy Mayfield in seventh spot. Kmart Ford running well this afternoon. The Rusty Wallace right behind him. Who once again spoke spun earlier on. He's in eighth spot. And we look right behind him on a light Ford and you'll see. Ted Musgrave, where are you? Family Channel, Prime Star Ford. And we look from Musgrave's car forward to Rusty Wallace, the eighth place car. And next in line will be Bobby Hamilton in the STC Pontiac. Bill Elliott there is three laps down. He got caught after making a green flag pit stop. And Mark Martin in the Babylon Ford is the 11th place car. He's about 9 and 2 tenths seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. The leader's brother, Ward Burton, who will be in the next car in line, the MBNA Pontiac, in 12th spot, about 2 seconds behind his brother. Here we see the 30 car of Johnny Benson, the Pennzoil car, lap down. And Kenny Irwin on the outside pole. He's still on the lead lap in 13th spot. He is over 11 and a half seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. About a half a lap behind Kenny Irwin is the number 25 of Ricky Craven. Now, he jumped out in front of the leader, got back in the lead lap, and has pulled away here in the last few laps in the Budweiser Chevrolet. So he's not in too much danger right now of going another lap down. He is running in 14th position. There's the 15 cars on the lead lap. He started running a higher line around the racetrack, all on both corners, and he's just worked for him. He's able to pull away from the leader and Terry Labonte. Now, the last car on the lead lap is Terry Labonte in the Kellogg Chevrolet number five. We saw that graphic earlier that Jeff Burton had the fir first five fastest speeds. Right now, Terry Labonte and Ricky Craven have moved into the fastest lap. Labonte and Craven both on lap 181 ran over 120 miles per hour. That was right after the uh, restart of this race. They had new tires on. They jumped out in front of Jeff Burton and have stayed out there. And one reason new tires, as Ned talked about, and the air is getting a little bit cooler, a little bit heavier, therefore the cars make a little bit more horsepower. But now, as those tires are getting worn, Jeff Burton's car showing that he's a little superior to these cars. Want to put Labonte, he tries his best, but Labonte a lap down. Well, Terry had to run awfully hard, had to abuse his tires to stay out there, where Jeff has been able, Jeff Burton has been able to run pretty smooth and save his tires as much as possible. But now it's beginning to pass. And Labonte moved up. When that time when Jeff Burton went in the corner under, he moved up to let him go by and discovered that that high groove is working pretty good. Yeah. Watch as he pulls away from Burton the car link. That's the groove that I was talking about that Ricky Craven was running. Bill Jarrett caught up with Joe Nemechek. This will be a battle for third spot. 
It is about as good a shot as it should. Jaron looking to the inside of Joe. This check has had a great race so far, staying in there in third. Quarter seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon is only a half second behind the leader. There's Jimmy Spencer right in front of him. Jimmy has been very fast there for a while, but his car sort of leveled out now. He apparently abused his tires a little bit as he passed both Jarrett and Nemechek. But he is a lap down. He's the first car that is a lap down. He's in 16th position. Summary shows you that Dale Earnhardt, who made a charge from his 22nd starting position early in the race, now a lap down in 17th. And Jeff Gordon is closing in slowly on Jeff Burton. And Jarrett's closing in ever so slowly on the 40 new car of Nemechek. shown off the track and one car officially out that is Robbie Gordon. Sterling Marlin had a transmission problem in the garage replacement. Well he started so close that it's just so difficult to pass they all run almost the same speed. They did they qualified almost the same speed we mentioned at the top of the show but just a fraction over a quarter of a sec over a third of a second separated the fastest qualifier from the slowest qualifier to make this field. Here's Jeff Burton looking on the inside once again of Terry Lavati as they head down into turn one. And boy, he's getting those brake rollers heated up now, Benny. He's having to use them pretty heavy now as he tries to pass the Terry Lavati car. Jerry Putch? Well, Ned, you can read my mind. A lot of teams out here are pointing to that 99 when he comes by. We're going to try to give you a shot. We can catch the left front brake is absolutely ablaze when he comes by trying to get by the five car. Here he comes again. Look at the left front brake. See the flame coming out. The brakes are red hot on the X side forward. That means he is really using them trying to get by Terry Lavani. The interval now is just about a car length and a half between the leader, Jeff Burton, and second place, Jeff Gordon. We'll take another break and be right back to Richmond International Raceway. Two lead cars in heavy traffic once again. They have put uh, Ricky Craven and Terry Labonte down a lap, and now they look toward Michael Waltrip, and up ahead is Mike Skinner as Bobby Labonte is in the pits. Like okay. some major problems for the interstate batteries. Pontiac John Kernan. Well, Bobby had radioed in about 20 laps ago. They thought either the alternator or the battery was going bad, so they've had to come in and change batteries. The belts were on the alternator, but the crew telling me that it was a problem with the alternator, so not charging the battery. So I guess they're lucky the battery lasted as long as it did. Got his Baltimore Colts helmet on. I beg your pardon. Is that the Indianapolis? That's the Indianapolis Colt, oh, Mr. Parsons. Excuse me. <laughs> you speak Baltimore Colt. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> I thought I'd get a rise out of you Indianapolis oh, Colt for that. Cow. <laughs> I know it's a Baltimore Ravens. I know that. Ah, pulling the leg, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that hurt, though. <laughs> Take a look at the Bush race recap. Jeff Burton has led 129 in the first 230 laps. We've had six lead changes, three caution periods, totaling 16 laps. The average speed is almost 106 miles an hour. Those who have picked up five bonus points for leading a lap, Burton, Elliott, Hamilton, Irwin, and Speed, and also Mark Martin, who has led just one lap. We have... As far as out of race, only one, Robbie Gordon, and we don't have anybody that is now off the track. And Jeff Gordon 
just hanging in there right on the back bumper of Jeff Burton. We'll keep the camera there and watch all the cars go by. So take a look and see where your favorite guy is. Bobby Money goes by. He's back. There's the 23 car. Red Boat Iron goes by. Kyle Petty. And we're back to the lead as they go by Hutchinson in the Circuit City car. Putting him three laps down. He's in 28 spot. He's another car that stopped. And he motioned to tell the 24 car that he's going to the pits. So everybody slow down. I'm heading for the pits. He has been out of sequence all night. And the pit stop's coming in a good bit earlier than anybody else. And Ernie Urban slowing down. He's up against the wall. It looks like he has made contact with the wall. He had a lot of damage already to the right side, and it looks like the right front tire is flat, Benny. Yes, some heavy smoke going off that right front. Now it's completely flat. He's trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack. He will, but can he get back to the pits? Oh, what a tough break for Ernie. They've come from way back and gotten back up into the top ten, but now he's got a long way to go to get back to the pits. He can do a lot of damage to that right front with that tire, all that rubber coming off and slapping around up there on lines and everything else. Let's update the uh, injury report to the tire changer, Bill. And Bob, that's good news. Robbie Hancock has been released from the infield tear unit. They say there's no bruising, no damage, no fracture. They actually cleared him to change tires, but instead, Robert Yates sent him back to the transporter to rest. They've gotten a tire changer from the 27 team, Kenny Irwin's team. Of course, a lot of interplay between that team and the Yates team. Right now, Ernie Irvin still needs to a stop here on pit road. They have to lift the car to get the jack underneath. They jack up the right side. They'll change the right side tires. They've got a hammer there to use to try and bang the sheet metal away. First, they reach in to try and knock some of that shredded rubber out from the wheel well. Around to the left side, they will change four tires going to the left rear and the left front. Old tires off. Tightening the lugs now. Ernie Irvin sits here painfully long stop under the green. Top it off with fuel waiting on the left rear. Now Ernie's on his way. Right side damage. Four fresh tires, but he lost very, very valuable track position. Ernie made his first NASCAR Winston Cup start here 10 years ago tonight. Well, let's see what did happen. It's up awfully close to the wall there, but that looks okay. And there, the tire went flat, and he slides it sideways. Up. I don't believe he hit the wall, Benny. I don't Boy, believe he, he kept it off. Great job of driving after that right front tire went flat, and you can see it is flat there right now. Wow. And we see that Jeff Bodine, the seventh car, has gotten by Nemechek in the 42 car and moved into the fourth spot. And Nemechek tried to get back by, but he almost lost it. Jimmy Spencer has lost the luster on his Ford. He was fast there for a while, but the tires have worn, and he heated them up. Step and slide. Wow, there is the tire that came off of Ernie Urban's car. Ernie's back in the race, though. He's fighting back now from 29th position, three laps down. We'll be right back. did not win the card PPG title last week. In fact, was fined and put on probation for rough driving, but he could clinch the title tomorrow, so we'll see. There's Jeff Burton on the right of your screen. He's the leader of our NASCAR Winston Cup race here tonight. And you can visit the NASCAR website at www.nascar.com and find out all kinds of things. The graphic display the top five cars as they cross the finish line, showing their relative proximity to the leader. Plus, between each of the top five cars and the leader, just one of the many things that you'll find on NASCAR online. And Rusty Wallace saw some smoke out of the exhaust pipe and, once, and the leader in traffic trying to get by the Brett Boat Iron car. Put him another lap down. Brett Boat Iron is in 22nd position, two laps down now. Looks like he had a close call as he came off the corner, so to speak. Come off the corner, and yes. A little contact between the two cars. 
but nothing more than you would expect on a short track on a Saturday night. Bedlow's got a pretty good run going tonight. Again, he's a couple laps down, but he's keeping up the lead a pretty good speed. A lot of green flag laps here tonight, which has caused a lot of cars to go a lap down, even though they're, they're not far off the pace. Second place. The 22 and 27 are battling for ninth spot. Ward Burton and Kenny Irwin. It's been battling for the last two laps. We see Irwin dive down to the inside. Burton moves up the racetrack, gets that momentum off the corner. Well, the kid has stayed on the lead lap uh, so far and got a fine job. Yes, he has. Kenny Irwin in the 27 car, his very first NASCAR Winch Cup race. Start on the outside pole. We're talking about the 27 car, and he's made a great account of himself tonight. An open wheel driver, and of course, also drives in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. made a pit stop. He has two wins this year in the truck series and finished fourth here in Friday night's race. Jerry Punch. You know, Kenny Irwin doesn't have a lot of experience, but some guys in his crew do. We're talking about Robert Shorty, which has spent about three decades with Junior Johnson, along with drivers like Bobby Allison, Kel Yarbrough, Darrell Walsh, and Jerry Bobby. You get the idea. Well, what Shorty did before the race is he talked to his young driver. He said, now listen, Kenny. He said, don't be intimidated here tonight. Don't be foolish. He said, you've got to earn their respect sometime, so you might as well start tonight. He's got my Ward Burt moved into that ninth spot. Got one car, the RNL Pontiac. That's Lance Hooper, the NASCAR Winston West champion in 1996. And Ward Burton gets back mine. He said, I worked so hard to get that position. And Joe Nemechek is headed for the pits. He has really started slipping and sliding all over the racetrack, Jerry, so he needs some new rubber on that car. Exactly, man. He had just commented, commented a moment ago, I am loose, big, loose. The two words he said, big, loose. Now he brings the Bell South Chevrolet, which they have nicknamed Nightmare. The weekend they had the brand new race car. And again, they come in with change right side tires. Two tires right side, now to the left side. Jack's coming around. They get it full of fuel. One full of fuel in. Trouble now. They're going to make a chassis adjustment on the track bar. Actually, going to have some bites in the left rear. Probably in one round, two rounds of bike. Let's go, on, and he is down and away at 24 seconds even. Oh, Bobby Labonte with those fresh tires. Just about Dick Triple, he closed in around the back bumper of the leader, and Burton goes high on the racetrack, and Labonte closed in right on the back bumper. Once again, evidence how much better the cars run with that fresh rubber on it. Yeah, he's uh, seven laps down. They had to change the alternator on the interstate battery car, but he's uh, going fast now. And yeah, we expect more pit stops to happen very soon. Dale Earnhardt has just made a pit stop. He's gone back out there. So we'll take a break here and be back in just a moment for more NASCAR Winston Cup racing. NASCAR Select Batteries 400, which is 266 laps old. And Jeff Burton still continues to lead in the Exide Batteries Sport. Jeff Gordon is in second spot. And he's uh, not running near as fast as Burton is right now. He's losing ground to him and also to the third and fourth place cars of Dale Jarrett and Jeff Bodine. Bodine has caught Jarrett, so he's, he's really on the move. There's our leader. Jeff Burton, he has now enjoys over a three and a half second lead. Steve Grissom, the 41 car, the Kodiak car, just made a pit stop and watch those fresh tires go by. We'll go back and there's Jimmy Spencer also made a pit stop with fresh tires. See Jeff Gordon, the second place car. And this time, almost four seconds behind the leader, Jeff Burton. He is really struggling coming off turn two in particular. You see Jeff Bodine has passed Dale Jarrett, taken over third, and uh, right here is where Bodine is making up a lot of time. 
coming off of turn two. Bernhardt and Tim Schrader both have made pit stops and those fresh tires once again clearly better than those tires that are worn. I was wrong there. It was turn four they were coming off of. But, uh, for, uh, Gordon is losing some time. And Earnhardt with those fresh tires and also the 33 car. Uh, Kenny Schrader was in not too long ago. He has fresh tires. Boy, that's a bit they are battling for position, though. They're battling for the 22nd spot, Earnhardt and Schrader. Jeff Bodine, the seventh car, getting closer and closer to Jeff Gordon. There we see just a couple of car lengths back. Terry Lamont just made a pit stop to tell on the show away. He's going back on the racetrack. Coming up, he's going to try to look on the outside, but couldn't do it there. Let's see. Now he tries it on the outside once again. Gordon gives him running room up there. He's come off of, by the start finish line off turn four, and Jeff Bodine takes over second. In the last six races, Jeff Bodine has averaged a 10th place finish, and that team is sorting things out. You're staying out there. How come? Well, Bob, it had been saying we could go about 100 laps on tires. They last pitted on lap 173, which means 100 laps would put them coming in at lap 273, which is exactly right now. But they're not going to come because if you calculate the fuel mileage, if they can go to lap 280, Jeff Gordon can make it the rest of the way, and so could the 99 car. But then again, who would have the best tires at final 120 laps? But you got to at least make it stay out there and have a shot at making it with fuel mileage. So right now, they're going to go about another 5 to 7 to 10 laps, and then 10 for what would be their final stop if it were to come down to fuel. So check this out, Rusty Wallace. Somebody's got to give. And Jeff Gordon does. Jeff Gordon, let me add the NASCAR Winch Cup points leader game. Yes. Dale oh, Jarrett is closing the back of Jeff Gordon. But there again, as Jerry Punch reported, Jeff Gordon needs to go in. He needs to get tired. But as he said, Jerry said, he needs to get lap 280. And he's going to stay out there. He's going to stay out there until he gets to that 280, no matter how slow he goes. Well, he was the slowest of the top six on that last lap, down to 110 miles an hour. And Rusty Wallace is the fastest of all of them. And boy, this battle between Ward Burton in car number 22 and 27 of Kenny Irwin Jr. still rages. Looks like Irwin might have him once again. Well, I don't know. Burton comes back up on the outside. Now, Irwin does get the spot. It looks like the 88 car is headed for the pits. Shot Curtis. Dale Jarrett dropping back to fifth place now. He comes in to the pits for a four-tire change at a pound of air pressure to the right rear tire and also we expect him to make a chassis adjustment adding one round of fight. We've already done that. Now the right side's are done. Now, now goes the chassis wrench goes into that left side to put the round in. Left side tire is coming off. Going on with the left side. DJ keeping the motor revved up and a really quick pit stop. 19.9 seconds. Jerry goes down pit road. Jeff Burton has just completed the 280th lap, so uh, we'll see Gordon and some others possibly pitting here before long. And Rusty Wallace moves up. This is a battle for second spot and puts Rusty in second. Well, his car is good on long runs. That's what he needs. all drivers in four categories number of wins number of top tens average finish and the number of laps led 
Jeff Gordon is second in the number of laps led category, but there is quite a difference between Rusty and Jeff. Kenny Irwin now headed for the pits. Jerry Punch. All right, 28-year-old Kenny Irwin coming down. He expects to put four tires on his Ford, the winter circle crew, and they will put right side and left side tires on his car. And meanwhile, they have gotten the lap 280, and now Ray Everham will call Jeff Gordon down pit road. Right side tires have already gone on the Kenny Irwin car, and Gordon comes in and brings it to the pot Chevrolet to a halt. They have not planned any major adjustment. They will clean the windshield, change right and left side tires on Gordon. They had to get at least a lap 280 to 283. It is lap 283 right now. Left side tires going on. Just behind him, the car number 99 is in. It is Jeff Burton. And Gordon is out of the way. We'll check in with Bill Weber. Jeff Burton sliding into his stall, has his right side tires on. Now they'll swing around to the left side. Smooth pit stop so far. Left front on. Left rear going on. Tool going in. Left rear tire gets away briefly. The hood is up on Mark Martin's car behind him. Burton's away. John Turner. Jeff Bodine is in for a four tire change in fuel. We don't expect any chassis adjustments. They're already done on the right side. Back around to the left side. Mark Martin got the hood up. Pit stops continue here on pit road. Mark Martin is pulled away. Rusty Wallace is about to slide into his stall here with 285 laps on the board. They're very convinced they have a good car despite their early problems in that spin he had in final practice. Right side tires going on the middle line board. Robin Pepperton, crew chief overseeing the pit stop. Now they swing around to the left side. Fuel going in. Now the left front. Left rear. Tightening the lug nuts. Waiting on the left front. have been made, guess who's going to be the leader? Joe Nemechek. Joe Nemechek, because he stopped a long time ago. Now watch this. Watch this pick stop by Frankie Stoddard. Frankie Stoddard, the left front tire changer. And watch this. The tire's rolling out. He thought he was going to run into his car. And look, he dived after that tire to keep it from hitting his car. A little extra effort there. So Jeff Burton is going to be second, but Joe Nemechek is going to be the leader of this race. He made his pit stop early and was running a lot faster out there on the racetrack than the others, and uh, that let him gain that much time, but they'll be able to gain good on him now. In fact, they're picking up over a half a second a lap on him right now because his tires are now beginning to heat up. He's got about 20 laps on them. He has a seven-second lead on Jeff Burton, but he stopped on lap 256, and if you said that, he had the advantage of 25 laps running with those new tires. 112 laps remain in this race as 288 have been completed. Nima check, Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Bodine, the top five. Check leads the Exide NASCAR Select Batteries 400, leading his first laps here at Richmond International Raceway in eight events. And then he mentioned right before we went to break that he had a seven-second lead. It's down now to 4.4 four, 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 because they are picking up almost a half a second a lap. Jeff Burton is, who is running in second place. An oil pump belt brought Mark Martin in, cost him laps, and he's now in 25th position. So if NASCAR points were awarded right now. Jeff Gordon would have a 92-point advantage on Mark Martin. Bill Weber. And Bob, what happened there, the power steering belt came off on Mark Martin's car, and when it left, it decided to take the oil pump belt with it. So they came in during that pit stop, they got the oil pump belt back on, but not the power steering belt. Guys, going to use all his muscles tonight to wrestle that car for the next 103 laps. He is being shown in 25th now, two laps down. Mm -hmm.
points if they were awarded now. Martin, 92 behind. Jarrett would stay in third. Jeff Burton would move up one to fourth. And Terry Labonte down one position to fifth. As far as the second five are concerned, the sixth, seventh, and eighth would stay the same. Musgrave would move up a spot, and so would Jeremy Mayfield into the top ten. Jeff Burton's going to be close to leading the most laps, isn't he? Right now, he has led 182, so yes, he has already uh, clinched that. Racy run down the screen. Nina Chet, Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Bodine. What a bunch of Jeffs in that group. <laughs> Rusty Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield. Great run for Jeremy Mayfield. We'll see Bobby Hamilton back in the lead. That Musgrave and Ward Burton. 11th place car will be the 27 of Kenny Irwin. Ward Burton and Kenny Irwin right now is a lap down to this car. Whoops, they're trying to get a lap back. Ward's trying to get a lap back right now. He, he has pressure tires. The 22 has pressure tires, does, then does the 42. So he's able to move on around. Pressure tires by some 20 to 25 laps. There you see the speeds there in the 99 of Jeff Burton over 118 miles an hour. Of course, he has about 25 lap pressure tires, then does Joe Nemechek. Makes a world of difference. And he is mowing that lead down. But all this traffic he's caught here right now, it's going to take Jeff Burton several laps to lead his way through this traffic. Last time we saw 117.9. We'll see what he does this time. 116.6. We lost 1.3 miles per hour as he tries to get through this traffic. And he will run the same speed no faster than that the next lap. Jeff Green there in the 29 car celebrating his 35th birthday today. Back in 34 spot, five laps down. Dale Jarrett that time was faster than the 99 car. The car back in third spot. But Jarrett was out in the racetrack by himself. No one even close to him. So that makes a difference. In this heavy traffic. And Rusty Wallace is getting the handle on his car. That time was the second fastest car. Let's see Jarrett go by. He's the third place car. Jeff Gordon. And here comes... That's Mark Martin, I'm sorry. Here's Rusty Wallace. And they had a longer than usual pit stop for that crew. Looks like they might have made a change on the right side. They might have jerked the rubber out or something on the right side of that car. Rusty up to six spot now. As Joe Nemechek is the leader over Jeff Burton and Dale Jarrett. We'll be right back. Preparation and organization are the key in NASCAR to getting things done efficiently and in a hurry. Let me show you. There's a manual they use here in the Richard Childress pits. Behind me it says damage repair procedure. Light damage can be repaired on pit road. Remain calm. That's important. Assess the damage. Get a visual inspection, a driver report, and a spotter report. Now, let's go over here. They have a transmission replacement. Remain calm. Use heat gloves. Mike asks two floor jacks to put the car on stand. Gary and Melvin have four jack stands ready. At least one full match high. Okay, over here, so it may be clutch problem repair. Use heat gloves. Mike asks two floor jacks to put the car on stand. Gary G and Melvin have four jack stands ready. At least one full notch high. Dan G and Jim J remove transmission and cross member. You see, they are so well organized, it's almost like a Broadway play. Every single individual has a part that they've memorized. They know exactly what to do under each individual circumstance. Well, we have a new leader, folks. Jeff Burton has passed Joe Nemechek and gone into the lead. Ago, we saw some smoke, however, out of the 99. Can we determine from where it came and what might be the problem? Watch as he comes down the straightaway. And about right there, you see that puff of smoke? I don't... <laughs> it almost looks like it came from the exhaust penny, but we haven't seen it since. We haven't so seen that, uh, I would think, and I'm just guessing, that he might have broken an inner valve spring. 
and for just a second, the valve touched the piston, and that's where the smoke came from. Well, he is losing ground to this 88 car here right now as he's battling for the second position with Joe Nemechek. Jarrett was about three seconds behind Jeff Burton, but now has moved it to about 1.42 seconds. And you know something, if that happened, Ned, I, I doubt very seriously Jeff Burton would know that he had a problem. Well, the crew is reporting that he does not have a problem, so, you know, if he, if he wouldn't know it, well, they, he wouldn't be able to tell them. And uh, although, you know, if he if he broke the bow spring, though, you'd think that he'd feel it in this other way when he heads off the turn, but maybe as slick as the track is now, he might not be. And every bow spring, and it's just a, a little bit of smoke. I'm not sure he could feel that whatsoever. We'll see. We'll watch this develop and see if the car runs. There's a little bump there, and, maybe, and he's on the bottom of the racetrack. It could be that the car went down in the fender, the left rear fender touched the tire. Kenny Urban there, the 27 car, is back on the lead lap. He was a lap down at 11, but now is at the tail end of the lead lap. And Dale Jarrett now is just 1.4 seconds behind the leader. Jeff Burton. The check again as we come by, and it's 1.3 seconds. And Jeff Burton is not closed in on the back of the 27 car. I do believe that he has lost a little bit of power. Yeah, he's about a mile an hour off the speed of the next uh, three, three of the top six cars. Jerry Pike? You know, I don't know if it's power or not, but about a lap and a half ago, Buddy Parrott hadn't said anything to him about the engine, but what Buddy did say was that, that Jeff, I gotta tell you, on the last stop, he wore the, the tire down to the cord on the inside. You have got to back off and save these tires. You'll see one car short of a bit of smoke, which will the car number 25, a Ricky Craven, and he will come down pit road. Craven was in 15th position, and he has found his pit stall. Well, that could be what Jeff Burton is doing. Maybe he is just simply conserving tires. I'm told the 25 car was was too fast coming down pit road. Here's the official standing in front of the car. What in the world was that? Well, that guy. <laughs> How's that? He's standing there, and he'll hold him for 15 seconds as Bill Elliott comes down pit road. Bill has been uh, coming in earlier than most others all night long. Boy, he, he started out so great, but right now he's four laps down before he makes this pit stop in 30-second position. It must have been a flat tire on the 25 car. They changed four tires. He goes back on the racetrack. Kyle Petty comes out of the pits as well. And Jeff Burton still hasn't been able to put Kenny Irwin Jr. lap down. He moves on the inside of the four car of Sterling Marlin, who is many, many laps down. He's in 39th, 63 laps down, as a matter of fact. I guess that makes 64 now. They changed the transmission on the four car. For his third win of 1997, he's already won at Texas and New Hampshire. He leads here in Richmond. Jeff Burton continues to lead, but that interval now back to second place. Dale Jarrett is less than a half second. And there is Dale Jarrett. There's the leader. You can see just about 10 car lengths between the two. And meanwhile, Jeff Gordon is catching both of them. Heavy traffic. And here comes Jeff Gordon. Like you said, Ned, he is now three and a third seconds behind the leader. Jeff Burton trying his best to put the 27 car lap down, and here comes... Jeff Gordon this time under three seconds behind the leader. Jeff Bodine has passed Nemechek and gone to fourth. Just to watch up front. And the first three cars. Dennis Rader comes down pit road and he stole the Chevrolet. He is in 16th position. Now it's 
Jeff Burton trying to put Kenny Irwin a lap down. Irwin in 10th position. Runs up on Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton is in 9th position. And he's just going to take both of them at once. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Irwin hanging in there, but Burton gets the best of him but puts Kenny a lap down. Now let's go down to Bill Weber. And just a little over 60 laps left to go in this race. And you know Mark Martin's in about the best physical shape of any driver in this race. But the Roush team has gone and gotten Wally Dolan back. He is down here in the Roush pit with his helmet on. He is standing by to relieve Mark Martin. They've requested oxygen down here for Mark if indeed he should get out of the car. Now, team manager Steve Neal had just gotten off the top of the pit box. He just climbed back on top. But a possible relief driver for Mark Martin, who is driving without power steering right now, is Wally Dolan back. You see him, and he cannot... There's Dolan back, and you see that he cannot turn the steering wheel. He's got his hands on the inside of the steering wheel and just goes in the corner and tries his best to turn. He's got his elbow against the steering wheel trying to press down on it. Normally, that right hand, Benny, would be up on the top of the steering wheel, and you'd be, be pushing on it up to see there. But you're right. He is using every ounce of muscle he has now. Wow. The guy that is just 25 points back in the NASCAR Rich Cup point standings. A bad, bad night for Mark Martin. He's wearing it back in 16th spot. He laps down. And watch it as he comes off the corner. Thank God for straightaways, he's saying. He goes to the corner. We see that he's got his hand under the steering wheel. He goes in, takes his own arm, and tries to turn that steering wheel. Joe Nemechek comes in for a pit stop, giving up a top five position. Jerry's headed toward you. Well, Bobby had to pit on lap 257 before it was pit. He had to make at least one more stop. This will be his final stop as he comes down pit road. Tony Glover and the Bell Stout crew. Felix Sabata's own car, 35 miles an hour. And the brake rotors are glowing as he comes to a halt. They will clean the windshield, put on four fresh tires, pop it off with fuel, one can about a can and a half to go this final well less than 70 laps now here left side tires going on they stamp around and this brake motor is absolutely blowing it is right red on the left front they pull the jack he is down and away at 20.2 seconds on that stop i tell you what guys if this thing goes green flag the rest of the way that's not bad strategy no it isn't it isn't now He's, he's going to be able to gain a lot of time, like he did before on the last pit stop, and he said he goes the rest of the race. But how about these other guys? Are they going to have to stop? Probably not for fuel, but they're going to be slipping and sliding near the end of the race. There's the leader, Jeff Burton. He started this race in 11th position and so far has led 215 of the 341 laps. Jeff Burton enjoying about an eight-tenths of a second lead on Dale Jarrett. Jeff Burton finished fourth earlier, rather, a year ago, and finished third. Well, look at that 42 car, Joe Nemechek, Bob. Just flying now with those new tires on him. Now, he's got to catch uh, the 99 car. He's two laps down right now. If he gets the 99 car, he'll be one lap down if he gets by, which he should be able to do with those new tires. He's just moving right along. But now whether you can make up that much or not, there's not a caution between now and the end of the race. I, I would really doubt it. And we see 23 car Bobby Hamilton is losing an engine going in the corner. He's not coming to the pit road. And he was the groove. If that thing is putting down any oil or liquids, that could cause a caution, but let's see. He's staying out there, as you say. Right in that bottom groove. Spotters are telling him, hey, he's running in the bottom groove. Don't know if he's putting anything down or not. Now Bobby Hamilton comes into the pit. He was running in 12th position when the problem occurred. Ben Musgrave leaving the pitch like that's it, and Bobby Hamilton is coming into you, Jerry. And Benny, they're going to bring him around behind the wall. Bobby thinks it's probably the rear end that may have gone away. They're going to try to put it up on jack stand and see if maybe it's the gear, or they can just put some more rear end grease in. 
Robbie Loomis gets the pace car to pull up and move out of the way. And now Bobby brings the STP Pontiac in and to a halt. Has a cloud of smoke now and uh, comes from beneath the car. They are going to try to get the, the car jacked up. Bobby puts the window net down to try to get some air. And it's pretty doggone warm. He's just trying to get some fresh air because the entire inside of the car is getting full of smoke. They had a tough break for Bobby Hamilton. He had a great run going here tonight. Started third in tonight's race. Had 42 laps. And now he's behind the wall. Oh, we got a race for the lead here. Jeff Burton, 99 car, and Dale Jarrett are just car lengths apart. I think Jeff has been very cautious on that slick racetrack. Jarrett has moved up a, a lane where Bobby Hamilton was running right down the bottom of the racetrack beneath. That second room is the best place to be right now, it looks like. There's Jimmy Spencer. Spencer just came out of the pits not long ago. He passed both of them. With new tires on. Wow. Heavy traffic here as the cars come off the corner. About 20 laps ago, Dale Jarrett's crew chief Todd Pierce says, DJ, just be smooth out there. You got to save that right rear tire as he takes a peek on the inside as they head down into turn one, trying to take the move away from Jeff Burton. Said, be smooth. Save the right rear tire. It's got to last you to the end of the race. I just asked Todd. Is DJ still saving his tires, or have you cut him loose? He looked at me, smiled, and said, no, he's still saving his tires. We're not finished with the way that car can run yet. Well, you know, we talked a little while ago about Jeff Gordon had closed the gap to within about three seconds. Well, he's, he's back now over five seconds as these two Fords have pulled away from him. racetrack the way he needs to right there that's slowing his car down just a little bit and get the angle into the turn that he needs very finely did the lord gets out of the picture now lets his brother go at it and just a moment ago coming off turn two this is going down the 
the front stretch. We see he in the 28 car, Ernie Irvin, going to the corner and make some contact. Jarrett goes, I mean, Gordon goes up the racetrack. And I thought coming off two, he slowed down so much, I thought something was wrong. Oh, hello. <laughs> Little bump so Ernie. I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> so 36 laps remain in this race, and Dale Jarrett has gone into the lead. With Jeff Burton now second, and Jeff Gordon is now in third position, but he's more than five and a quarter seconds back. We'll be back in just a moment to Richmond. settle the score in this NASCAR Winston Cup event and we are on record pace. Previous track record 108.499 and right now we're at 108.745 as Jarrett continues to lead. Goes by Jeremy Mayfield who's currently running in six spots so now only five cars on the lead lap. Most cars within nine seconds. Rusty Wallace in fifth, nine seconds behind the leader Dale Jarrett. comes by the fashion car to start finish line. We'll see he's six seconds behind the leader. There comes Jeff Bodine, fourth place car. He's under nine seconds, and Rusty Wallace, about nine and a quarter seconds behind. Started way back in 23rd spot. We we'll see that the 11th place car, Ted Mustard, got the last round. He had to carry the body there, and the 10th place car just went two laps down. Lowest starting position of a winner on this three quarter mile track, Terry Labonte started 24th in the spring race of 1995. I said Jarrett started 23rd tonight. Driving a car that uh, was not among his favorites. It might change if things keep going the way they are right now. That's the car that ran to Martinsville back in the spring. He probably ran the worst of his run all year. Todd uh, Eric said we can make that car run. We want to take it to Richmond. Finishes here at Richmond, second, third, and two fourths. He's in the lead tonight, looking for his first lead here at this facility. Back in a moment. Our pole sitter for tonight's race, Bill Elliott. He's been named the second quarter nominee for the NASCAR True Value Man of the Year Award. Sponsoring the award, which awards $50,000. Bill recently served as honorary chairman of the first annual Dawson County Georgia Cancer Society Relay for Life fundraiser dedicated to the memory of his nephew, Casey, who passed away last January at the age of 21. So Bill Elliott, nominee for second quarter True Value Man of the Year. He right now is running in 30th position some six laps down as we take a look at the second place car there of Jeff Burton. Well, Jeff Burton, uh, talking about him, seems to me his car has gone away. Uh, he's having trouble keeping it down on the racetrack and spinning coming off the turn sometimes. Getting a little bit loose. And 
losing ground to the leader. The only consolation is there are only 13 laps remaining in the race. And he's got about a three and a half second lead on Jeff Jordan, who is in third position here. So we don't know if he can uh, hang on and stay out in front of Gordon or not. Bill Weber? Yeah, Ned, you're right on the money. The pictures tell it all. Jeff has told his crew that car simply is not as good now as it was earlier in the race. Buddy Parrott tried to get him to try different lines, run a little higher line, but nothing has helped. The car simply not as good as it late, not as good late in the race as it was earlier. Very similar situation to what we saw with this Bush car last night. And we'll look at the on-track interval, the AutoZone on-track interval between the leader, Dale Jarrett, the second-place car, Jeff Burton, on lap 382 to 386. In those five laps, you see the lead went from 1.6 seconds to three seconds. It's a second and a half gain just in five laps. And look at Burton, 24, 0, 24, 2, 24, 3, continuing to slow down almost each and every lap. than 10 laps to go now. I remind you that Sports Center will be up right after the conclusion of our race with reports on baseball, college football, tennis, and other areas of the world of sports. U.S. Open men's semifinals going on. You know, it's strange to see the leaders of the race cars that are going to win the race being passed by so many cars. You say, how can they be leading the race? Because they did not spend as much time in the pits as the other cars did. These cars that are passing the leaders who have been in the pits and have pressure tires. And we see Joe, Joe Nemechek in that picture there. He has come all the way around the racetrack and is about to make up that lap that I said he might not be able to make on Jeff Gordon. But he hadn't got up to Dale Jarrett yet, as Bill Elliott now tries to go by Jarrett. But uh, uh, Joe Nemechek has definitely been running very, a lot faster than the leaders with those fresher tires. But he got too far down to begin with when he made that pit stop. And we see that time that Jeff Gordon had the fastest lap. And we see, but we see how far he is behind the leader, 5.39 seconds. Right now, Jeff Gordon, he may not, he may not, may not be winning the war, the battle, but trust me, he is winning the war tonight with Mark Martin having all the trouble he's having. I never see Mark currently back in 32nd position. And Gordon is closing on Jeff Burton. He's got it down now to less than two seconds. But the next time by when Jeff, when Dale Jarrett comes off the corner, one handful of laps, five laps to go. Five laps, this baby's going to be history. the two contenders, the top two in the points as Jeff Gordon passes Mark Martin. Mark Martin in 24th position now, four laps down. Wow, he got up there quick, didn't he? There's Nemechek, we talked about him, so he's getting back in the lead lap. Joe Nemechek in sixth place, getting back on the lead lap. And this will be Joe Nemechek's best finish of the year, if he can hold that spot. His current best finish was 12th at Watkins Glen. And that's what Joe Nemechek told me in the garage today. We need a good finish. You know, right now, the fourth place to them or fifth place to them is almost like winning. That's the answer to sixth place. But that to them is a moral victory. Three laps to go now as Jarrett, Burton, and Jeff Gordon all cross the line. show you how far back the first three cars are. There's the 88 car with two laps to go. And there's the second place car of Jeff Burt. And there we see Jeff Gordon just crossing the start finish line. The third place car. See the white flag this time by. On Daryl Waltrip in the 17 car. Actually, Daryl just passed Dale Jarrett. And there is one lap to go as the white flag comes out. Less than three quarters of a mile to go for Dale Jarrett. Oh, big time. Even on the last lap.
lap. He's trying his best to work this car back to the line. And so the driver who didn't have any short track wins coming into 97 now has won two straight short track events as Dale Jarrett takes the checkered flag and wins his fifth race of 1997 with Jeff Gordon finishing second and Jeff Gordon finishing third. Jeff Bodine will go home fourth as Lance Cooper spins on the backstretch on the final lap. Rusty Wallace finished fifth. Check six. Let's take a look at this. The 37 car that comes off the line for the, something is wrong with the car. He go down the back stretch, he goes to the corner, almost loses control. Oh, and look at the, the sparks coming out. It looks like the tire is flat. And he nurses that car back around, and then we see the rock rear tire completely flat by now. Jeremy Mayfield, however, drove to a 10th place finish as Dale Jarrett is headed for Pit Road. And the winner circle here at Richmond International Raceway. We'll be back to talk with them in a moment. Victory Lane, we have a very exhausted Dale Jarrett who has won this race and now climbs out of the car. And Dr. Jerry Punch has our McDonald's drive through winner circle interview. You talk about a driver that just drove until he couldn't drive anymore. What a great effort. He brings his girls in here, and here's Kelly, his wife, and his son, Zachary, and uh, DJ, outstanding effort. I tell you, Jerry, this uh, crew's pretty awesome. Uh, we couldn't get this car hardly going all week and still wasn't the best uh, at the beginning of the night. And they worked hard and had great, great pit stops as they've been having. I'm just glad that I got Todd Parrott on my side. And uh, this Robertson H engine did a fantastic job. Thank all our sponsors, you know, Ford Quality Care, Ford Credit, uh, Texaco, Plastico. Everybody just does a great job for us. And uh, good to win five this year and two short tracks in a row. Pretty awesome. Hey, what happened to you? Uh, suddenly, that everyone said you weren't a short track racer. Now you've won two in a row. Uh, where'd the pointers come from where you just suddenly felt comfortable? Well, it's just a matter of working together, and uh, Todd and I have had enough time on the short tracks. We've come close, but I uh, just couldn't quite pull it off until these last two. And uh, you know, they did a great job. They give me good cars every week, and uh, we get it close. All right, we're going to back out of the way and let them get in here and give him some fluids. And, uh, and we... Uh, and they've even maybe asked the crew to come in and give him a breath of oxygen out of a tank because certainly he is absolutely spent tonight in that race car. And fortunately, our commercial ran a little bit and let him sit in the car and catch his breath so he could come out and we could talk to us. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have been able to get out of the car. Dale led 39 laps en route to his 13th career win. The 27th driver to win here at Richmond International Raceway. We'll be back with more in a moment. The race is over. Dale Jarrett has won, and all evening long, we've had overhead shots courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. As you look down on the more than 100,000 who are now beginning to file out of Richmond International Raceway. A reminder that Sports Center is coming up in just a few minutes. A chance to get caught up on everything that occurred today in the world of sports, Major League Baseball, and college football, and everything else. So stay tuned for Sports Center coming up in just a few minutes now let's take a look at what happened here on the last lap on the back stretch from ted musgraves on board camera well we saw the one car there just as uh, after the checkered flag fell and here's ted musgraves coming up on joe nemechek and nemechek coming up on the number one car of lance hooper boom they make contact and sends the one car of hooper spinning around bill weber is with jeff burton <laughs> well, Jeff able to laugh, <laughs> so I know second place stinks, but uh, you had another great run. Uh, we had a great race car. The guys did a great job in the pits. Uh, they caught a lot of hell after Darlington. Let me tell you, they showed you tonight what they were made of. They great pit stops, and um, I asked for it to be a little bit tighter at the end, and that's what they made it, but it turned out to be a lot looser. Uh, probably should have asked for it to be a lot tighter. And, uh, I just misread the track a little bit. I misread it last night, too. I thought it needed to be a little bit looser, and uh, I got tight. So <laughs> we were doing everything but winning at Richmond. Okay, well, they won it loud, and that's where we're going next. Jeff Burton with a second-place finish for the second week in a row. But the big winner, Dale Jarrett, another short track win. More from Richmond after this timeout. Go where you want to go. 
Back at Richmond International Raceway, let's take a look at the point standings. Jeff Gordon will now have a 97-point advantage over Mark Martin. Dale Jarrett only 153 behind. Jeff Burton and Terry Labonte trade places. And so do Ted Musgrave and Ricky Rudd, with Musgrave up to ninth and Ricky down to 10th. John Kernan is with Mark Martin. Well, uh, as Jerry and you guys said a little bit earlier, Mark Martin probably one of the most physically fit drivers, but Mark, you look worn out. No power steering. That makes it really tough, doesn't it? <laughs> we had a 10th place car tonight that if we got enough green flag, we could run fifth with. And we got the green flag at the end, but unfortunately, 120 laps and no power steering was pretty tough on me. Yeah, you, you had to use, what, your elbow, just air, all your weightlifting skills, right? The steering wheel was a little too far away from me, but what I did was I put this hand right here and this one down here and took this elbow and put up on the wheel. And the only thing I couldn't do is run hard enough to get loose because, you know, to turn back right and catch it and then back left was cause me to lose it. I, I gave him a best. The Valvoline team gave it their best. Oil pump belt was off, too. We shut it down, coasted in. That cost us two laps and then two more laps on the racetrack because, you know, we just... We just couldn't race like that, so I did the best I could. I guess now you can uh, take it kind of easy this week because you've already got the workout in for next week, right? I don't think I'm going to do my arms, but uh, we'll be hitting the weights again on Monday. Got to stay on that routine, but uh, my arms are tired. Back upstairs. Mark Martin finished 25th this evening, four laps down, but a great effort he made in coming home here tonight. Sports Center coming up next here on ESPN. We will be back with more from Richmond International Raceway right after this. The Pennzoil Copter Cam continues to fly over Richmond International Raceway, giving us a great view of this tremendous three-quarter mile racetrack here in Enrico County in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Great short track racing tonight, won by Dale Jarrett. Here's John Kernan with Jeff Gordon. Well, Jeff, a fine third place finish tonight, but you look like you might be a little worn out. How tough was it? Well, it wasn't tough on me at all. I feel like 100%. I don't, I don't know what the deal. My car was, so, you know, when you're driving a, that loose of a race car, you just got to go so slow through the corners. I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy and fortunate to finish third. I, I really thought we were going to be a lot worse than that. We had a really awesome race car for about 25, 30 laps. And, Man, I tell you what, the right rear tire just would go away, and uh, I had my hands full after that, but really wasn't demanding or anything, you know. I mean, we got a really good uh, air system. And, uh, you know, I stayed nice and cool. I thought it was a pretty cool night, and uh, I was just upset I wasn't up there battling for the win. That was kind of a joke, because you looked pretty good, but uh, now you've extended your points lead over Mark Martin. Things are looking really good for you guys as you head into the next race. Well, I didn't have a power steering go bad. <laughs> Mark, Mark's an amazing guy, and to be able to come out of here the way he did is uh, pretty, pretty good. But, uh, uh, you know, we extend it, but, you know, I think what 97 points, that's like nothing. You know, I mean, this thing goes up and down so much. Every time uh, somebody gets that big of a lead the next weekend, they, uh, they have problems. So I just hope we can keep the consistency. You know, we did what we need to do here tonight. We didn't have him in sight, but we had a third-place car, and we finished third, and uh, it's great to come out of here and go on to the next one. And that's the way you win a championship, Bob. Consistency is the name of the game in NASCAR Winston Cup racing, and Jeff Gordon, with his third-place finish tonight, will have a 97-point advantage on Mark Martin as the series continues. Well, in about five and a half minutes from right now, we'll be switching you to Sports Center with all the latest news from the world of sports. But we will come back here to Richmond in just a moment and wrap things up. And the uh, traffic jam moves from the racetrack to the streets surrounding Richmond International. We go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. What an effort by Jeff Bodine tonight from 31st to 5th on the first pit stop. And Jeff ended up finishing 4th. Uh, outstanding effort by the whole team. It really was. We had a great car. Handled good all night. Uh, didn't change anything. Got a little loose at the end. And, and the guys are coming out with those new tires. And uh, lap traffic. Uh, I caught G Gordon. I thought I was going to be able to get him. But couldn't quite get by him. And I fell back. But uh, he is about 20 years younger than I am, too. <laughs> but I'm real happy. This team is really coming together. Jim Mate is uh, right here, one of my partners. He's helped put this team together, believe me. He's helping Barry. Barry had a good truck race the other night. We're just proud of everything that's going on right now and uh, looking for the future. 
All right, Jim Matei came on board. They've had four top tens in the last six races since they've joined partners here in the 17. Let's go to Bill Weber. With Kenny Irwin, who's put his Tonka toy away for the night, but it was a good night for you. It was a good night. Um, Robert Yates and uh, <clears throat> David Blair gave me a great car tonight. We led a few laps. Um, I'm real happy, except for how I how I did the pit stops. I. Uh, but that's I, what you're here for, to learn and to race. That's right. We got five races to uh, this year and try to get ready for Daytona and get all the mistakes out of the way right now so we can go to go to Daytona. Just briefly, your overall thoughts of your first Winston Cup race. I thought it was great. I loved it. I mean, this is what I've worked my whole life for is, is to get right here, and um, now I just got to win a race. Okay, <laughs> and pit stop practice. It might be in a car. <laughs> That's right. We'll probably do some of that uh, this week. Okay, and we'll see you again at? Martinsville. All right, good luck. Thanks. Okay, that's Kenny Irwin. Great finish here tonight. We'll show you the unofficial results. Irwin there in eighth position. The yellow arrows indicate drivers who led a lap, and the double arrows beside Jeff Burton indicate that he led the most laps. Dale Earnhardt was two laps down at the end, 15 position. 16 through 30 this evening. Terry Cope will lead that group, and last year's champion, Terry Labonte, Craven, a couple of Rick Hendry cars. Kenny Wallace back in 24th. Hunt Strickland, local sponsor, finishes 27th. And Bill Elliott, the pole sitter, finishes back in 30th spot. And you have some drivers finishing far back down that led. Lake Speed led some, and Bobby Hamilton, of course, and he had a rear gearing to go out of his Pontiac. Only three cars out of the race. Lake Speed led a lap. There you can see what's coming up tomorrow here on ESPN and ESPN2, the Grand Prix of Italy Formula One race at 7.45 tomorrow morning. Cart on the grid at 2.30 in the afternoon on the deuce, and that will be followed by the Toyota Grand Prix of Monterey Cart PPG race at 3 o'clock Eastern time as Alex Zanardi tries again to win the championship. Well, stay with us now. Coming up is Sports Center. Find out how your favorite college football team did today, your favorite Major League Baseball team, and find out everything else you need to know from the world of sports. Dale Jarrett has won the X side NASCAR Select Batteries 400 here at Richmond International Raceway. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in